traders, it is Thursday, February 20th. We're four hours into trading. What a start to the day. Before I get to the analysis, let me take you to my chat room. Want to show you the entry, want to show you the commentary. So if you take a look here, you can see that was a pretty good little smackdown on SPY. This is about 55 minutes after the open. We're going to go take a look at that. You can see how I'm letting everyone know exactly what I'm looking for. I'm going to be trading the SPY February 28, 340 puts. I'm looking to buy those, and I will show you the pattern that I was looking for. And I'm going to continue to scroll down. We're doing a few other trades. It took a little bit of time for this to set up. Bought the SPY puts for $2.73. Check the timestamp, please. This is about an hour and a half into trading. And... I'm going to scroll down, providing commentary, charts. There's a lot going on. I show everyone the technical support level that was breached and sold my SPY puts here. 1036. Please check the timestamp on this. This was a double. We made 100% profit on that trade. So, how did I know? Well, we had this really big spike up in the 1OP indicator that I show pretty much every day and we had I'm going to take these buy and sell signals off so you can see it better and so we had the market rally up long tails under body nice long green candle everything normal here and the market continues to grind higher and it looks like every other day when the market is sold off the market's going to continue to rally higher and then WAPA WAPA two really big long red candles closing on their low well, that's not normal. We haven't been seeing anything like that. Usually, any little pullback is maybe six or seven or eight little bars that start to pull back, and then you get your another release to another new high. This was a warning sign. And I raised a brow and thought, well, I'm not real crazy about buying puts in this go-go market, but that was curious. So then here we are, right at that high, and I let everyone know, hey, everybody, this is a micro double top forming here. Micro because there aren't too many candles between these two tops. But we're not really able to advance. Oh, here we go. Now we've got a tail above body, tail above body. And we're starting to break down below this upward sloping trend line, line on a five-minute basis. And oh, yeah, we've got our 1OP cross. So we've got a number of different factors working in our favor. Double top lower high long tails above body we have a breakdown of this upward sloping trend line let's see if we've got a sell signal in here somewhere not until right here but on that breakdown you sure could have gotten short anywhere in here i got short right up in here before that breakdown even happened once we started to get the breakdown i had a nice little profit in the puts and then when i saw this long red bar right here blowing through the low of the day and blowing through the prior day's low, I knew we would at very least fill in this gap right here. So I was hanging on to my puts. <coughs> Lo and behold, we get another really long red candle closing on its low. This is bullish speculators getting flushed out. We get another long red candle closing near its low. And I'm going to go into a one hour chart to see any kind of support. And you can see here how everything, we've just blown right through it. Well, once we got down to this point right here, we had another long uh, tail under body starting to form in here. I didn't hesitate. I, I took my profits on that put position. I had a double. It's rare to get a double on an SPY put position in a matter of an hour, especially when you're trading options that expire a week and two days out. So I had a really, really nice trade going on that. I did release a bullish put spread video last night. Fortunately, we weren't able to get many of our bullish put spreads off because the stocks took off on us. So I'll show you a couple of those stocks that I still like today. And I think they're good swing trades, possibly for overnight if the market firms up. And the one bullish put spread that we did get into is Disney. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a look at how we're trying to leg out of that position right now. So... S&P 500 right now on a five-minute basis, and let's see if we can zoom out a little bit here. Here's what I'm looking at. So we had this compression down in here, and I did 
try to buy puts again. So uh, let me be clear. I did try and buy puts again here. I saw this long green candle fail, and I thought there's a good chance that after really heavy selling like that, we might have another chance to leg lower and to take out this low. Typically, if you're going to get really sustained selling like that, it's going to happen within a 20 to 30 minute period. But once we started to get into here, I knew that I was in trouble because this is a sign of support right here. So sellers have come in, come in, come in, and buyers, the bid is starting to, bi to build. Plus, look at this 10P indicator right in here. Boy, did it call that nicely. But in any case, so I don't want to trade against that. I didn't get the immediate move. So I did take a, a loss on my uh, puts. I bought these uh, initial puts at $2.70 roughly. I sold them for $5.50. So on this trade right here, yeah, I took a 25 cent loss on it. No problem. But the market right now, is going to be taking this into account. We've got a nice rally. We're about four hours into trading, as I mentioned. This is the upward sloping trend line that you have to watch right now. So I'm going to drop this trend line here, and I'm not going to use the absolute low. I'm going to go with something a little bit shallower. If I use this one, it might get me into a trade prematurely, but I'll be watching this 10P indicator we do have a cross right now. This is a little bit bearish right in here. You've got this nice long green candle, a little pause, nice long green candle closing on the high, another one, but this one is erased. So if you put this together into a 10 minute bar, it would actually be a bearish hammer. You can see a little bit of selling coming in right now. When you get a big drop like this in the market, there's a very, very good chance that this low of the day, probably this 334 level in here, is going to be tested at least one more time today. I'm counting on it. I think it's going to happen. Yes, the market is rally, rally, rally mode. Every time we've had one of these sell-offs, the market has been able to rebound. But today, Goldman Sachs said, hey, that coronavirus, yeah, you better watch it. The market is discounting it, and we feel that it's going to be, it's going to have a greater impact than everyone thinks. I tend to agree with that. The Apple news earlier this week that they were going to miss revenues was completely discounted. And I've been mentioning in my comments that until the market gets concrete numbers, concrete evidence from many, many different companies on exactly what the magnitude of this coronavirus is going to be on earnings, it's not going to worry too much about it. So that might not happen for another two or three weeks because companies are still gathering all of that information and trying to see exactly what's going to play out. But I posted in my market comments this morning that a lot of Chinese businesses are having difficulty meeting their payrolls because of the coronavirus and the production shutdowns. That's a problem. Also looks like uh, one of the Chinese provinces is going to have to buy out a company that is in pretty big trouble also. So there are some signs of strain right now due to coronavirus. It's been completely discounted. You've got bullish sentiment off the charts. That's why you get charts like SPCE and TSLA that have gone completely parabolic. Huge, huge run-ups. Everything's getting very, very fluffy and frothy right now. At a forward PE of 18, everyone's expecting great news. We're not getting great news. There are some problems that the market is going to have to deal with. And let's not forget that Europe and Japan are both teetering on recessions. So everything might be fine in China, at least up to this point, and in the U.S., but there are other parts of the world where the economy is starting to falter a bit. With global interest rates at historic lows, that is keeping a bid to the market. So it's all a matter of profit-taking, and when that news hits, and a matter of flushing out bullish speculators. You can see this drop right in here. I think we're going to see a little bit of selling coming in here real soon. So I'm doing this video. I don't have an SPY position on. If I were trading, I would definitely be watching this. So if I would have drawn a different alert line here, using the low from that bar and connecting to that, 
would probably be right on that support level right now. So let's take a look at a stock, Disney. Disney looked pretty good from a bullish put spread standpoint yesterday, but today it's starting to really soften up. So you see this downward sloping trend line here. You see this big spike, first of all. This is when they announced that they were going to be competing with Netflix and they had their own uh, streaming video uh, company that they had launched, 26 million subscribers. Oh, fantastic. Stock up, up, up. And then it starts to gradually give back some of those gains. And in here, you start to get the coronavirus when they had to shut down their theme park in Shanghai. So we get this big trough right in here. Nice bounce. And now the stock is actually starting to find support around these major moving averages. Well, I want to sell bullish put spreads on stocks that have this major technical support and that are showing signs of strength. So we went out to the February 28th expiration. We sold the 139 puts and bought the 138 puts. And you can see that those are right below this 200 day moving average. So we've got that level that we can lean on as well. That's the premise behind the whole trade. And this is what the bar looked like yesterday. So Disney, Nice little bullish hammer right in here off the 200-day moving average. Closes above it. Long green candle closing on its high yesterday above the 100-day moving average. Okay, all we need for the stock to do is to tread water for the next week and we'll be golden on this bullish put spread. That was the premise under which we did the trade. So this morning you can see the stock actually opens higher and we were able to get that bullish put spread off. But conditions changed very, very quickly. We broke below this 100-day moving average, which we definitely wanted to have it hold, and the stock kept coming in because the S&P 500 was dropping. So let's go into the five-minute chart, and here you can see how Disney has actually been pretty weak relative to the market. We get this bounce, and it's not able to clear this level. See how it's starting to roll over right here? If I put over the SPY, you'll be able to see Look at this nice big bounce on the SPY. That was its first peak. And you could see how it blew right through that resistance level. Not Disney, not able to get through that same level. So Disney has been weak relative to the market. And we bought back our short put position. Now we are just long the Disney puts with the expectation that the market is going to test that low of the day. As a stock with relative weakness, we feel that this 200-day moving average will at least be tested, so we'll be able to leg out of the uh, bullish put spread successfully, because now we're only long the 138 puts. And if things really get nasty this afternoon, the stock may actually close below the 200-day moving average, and we can make money on the trade. That's uh, not our intent to hold this bearish position overnight. We're simply trying to mitigate our losses on a bad bullish put spread that we put on this morning by legging out of it. So I thought that might be of interest, show you how we do that. These trades do happen from time to time. The good news is that on all of our bullish put spreads, we've been doing these progressively week in and week out. We're keeping inside that two-week time horizon to take advantage of accelerated time decay. That's worked in our favor for five months. and now we've got some spreads that are expiring tomorrow. Those are still in decent shape. I told everybody, buy some VXX, hedge your positions. As the market goes down, option implied volatilities would go up. That's what VXX measures and gauges. And so you'll be able to make money on your VXX, and it'll offset any losses that you have on your bullish put spreads. But if you've got them out there and they're trading for a penny or two pennies, reel them in. Reduce that, that risk even at a break even. Just buy them back in. We knew we were going to have to weather a couple of speed bumps. We're getting one today. And especially with the news out there on the coronavirus, we could not expect smooth sailing with the market up here near all-time highs. So we only got the Disney spread off. We had a number of others, and you'll see it in the video when I release it uh, to YouTube publicly on Saturday. Out of all the bullish put spreads, we only had one that we could get off. As soon as I saw that market breakdown, I said, hold off on all the bullish put spreads. We're not taking any trades with this kind of market breakdown in here. Once I saw that, I was like, what? We're not doing any bullish put spreads. Do not enter any of these. We're not able to because all the stocks took off on us. So hold off, which by the way, 
on my YouTube channel. If you're watching this video on YouTube, make sure to check the comments section because on the video that I posted yesterday, I went in last night and I was adding some comments to it. And I don't know if anybody reads the comments on the videos, but I said, hey, for those of you who take the time to read these comments, I've got a little gem for you. I think TLRY is going to go up. You can go in and check my previous video. See if I actually posted that. And I think there's a timestamp in YouTube that shows when I posted it. But in any event, TLRY really does look good. And that was one of the stocks that I highlighted yesterday. So let's see if we can bring up that quote. Look what that stock did on the open. And I said in that little comment yesterday, I said, hey, if you're reading these comments and TLRY pulls back at all, even a little bit, buy it. Whoosh. That stock went from $17.75 to $20.75. That is a $3 gain today on a $17 stock. Please go in and check those comments. I want you to know that these comments are real. The trades that I post in the chat room are real. This is not a bunch of hype. So please go in and do that. In any event, TLRY, I like it. Yesterday I said I'm selling a bullish put spread on TLRY. It's in fantastic shape. I still like the stock right here. Let's take a look at it. And let me keep the SPY up on this chart right here. That way we can always have it running in the background. I like it. Above that 100-day moving average, you got the stock's earnings coming up on 316. Really like this move here. It was through that downward sloping trend line. Watch the video from yesterday. You'll see me highlight TLRY yesterday afternoon. Beautiful trade. So you're up 20% on a $17 stock this morning on a stock. So Really nice pick there. I'm going to show you a couple of others that I like. I can't get into too much on how I found them because I've got to get back into trading. And it is a really busy day. But here's one that I like on the long side. I like Grub. Same deal here. Downward sloping trend line breach. Find support. Double bottom. Above that 100-day moving average. Long green candle. Closing on its high. This is one that we tried to sell a bullish put spread on that was where the video came out last night we're trying to leverage that support level right there at $50 zoom stock took off really never had a chance on this one right out of the gate it just shot higher now it's going to hit resistance at the 200 day moving average we'll see what it does there but I think that this stock really has the gas to go and let's talk about relative strength this is the one thing that we measure look at the strength in this stock it is undeterred by what's happened in the SPY today. Look at this. Look at that huge market sell-off. Well, we've got searches in Option Stalker that help us find these stocks. Plus, I happen to have it in a video last night, so everybody's already watching it. Big, big drop in the S&P 500. What's the stock do? Still up for the day. Doesn't even check the open. It finding support here. As soon as the market starts to waffle around down in here, what does it do? Boom. Boom, 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 marches higher. That's how you day trade. That's why there's such a huge advantage to trading stock. When the market's still chopping around down here, trying to decide what it's going to do, and you don't know as a trader, is it going to go higher? Is it going to bounce? Is it going to go lower? If you're on the wrong side, just like I was with my SPY puts, you are going to lose money. But in a stock like this, if you take a chance on it, and it's got that relative strength, while this is happening, it's marching higher. Now we're through to a new high of the day. I really like GRUB. G-U-R-B. H-O-G. Another one. Huge market decline. Okay, the stock pulls back a bit. But it's still way above the opening price. And as soon as the market finds support, it's off to the races. Let's go into that daily chart. Beautiful bullish hammer right in here. Above the 200-day moving average, maybe a good bullish put spread to sell. I think you got to be a little bit careful with bullish put spreads. The news today rattled some investors. I think buyers are going to be a little bit more passive. Goldman Sachs is already warning. So they see the impact of coronavirus, and they feel that the market is not properly accounting for it. So 
We've all known that it's going on. I feel that with every passing week, more and more information will be released on exactly the extent of the revenue loss that's going to be felt and if there are any kinds of credit concerns that are being caused in China. The People's Bank of China lowered interest rates by 10 basis points on their prime rate this morning. I thought the market would rally on that news. It did not, so that was a red flag to me right out of the gate. And the reason that it's a red flag is because they know they could have a liquidity crunch right now. So they're doing what they can to fend that off. I think you need to be careful in here. So let's put up the SPY chart that I'm going to show you a bearish stock that I like. So there's your upward sloping trend line. Watch that very carefully. If that gets violated in the next hour or so, then you can expect the market to sell off possibly down to the low of the day. I'm expecting that type of move, but I'm not going to trade it until I have all of the information in place. So I'm posting this early. Here's what I'll be looking for. I'll be looking for a rally up to this level with a breakout that immediately gets slapped down, and that would be an inverted hammer closing on its low. Then I'll know that the next bar will probably be a long red candle closing on its low that will violate this upward sloping trend line. And if it takes 20 minutes or a half an hour, it'll probably happen right in this 336 level on the SPY. I'd also like to see the 10P indicator spiking, cresting, troughing with a bearish cross. If I get that type of pattern, I'll probably buy some SPY puts. If we get a nice breakdown and we close on the low today, then I probably will hold part of the position overnight and take profits on part of the position. Well, why not hold on to the whole position? Because the market's been so dang gangbuster strong. Every time you buy a, a put or take a short position, you regret it. So that might be changing. So this is a lot of selling, not panic selling per se, but bullish speculators getting flushed out of their positions. I think we could see more of this coming in the next few weeks. So be cautious. If you've got some really nice gains in your long positions, I suggest locking them in for the time being. I don't think anyone's worried that there's going to be a runaway rally with Europe near recession territory, Japan near recession territory, coronavirus coming at the worst possible moment during the Chinese Lunar New Year. I think that they're going to take a hit on this one. It's going to impact U.S. earnings as well. So be careful. We had a really, really good market run. I'm telling everybody right now to take it easy on the bullish put spreads. We're going to wait for a little bit. I did, in fact, on last night's video, I had six bullish put spreads and six bearish call spreads. I have not been doing bearish call spreads. I did last week. I did two of them. Prior to that, I have not had any bearish call spreads for probably four months. So I'm already starting to see the market momentum wane. That's about all I have time for right now. I like Grub, G-R-U-B. The market rallies into the close. I think you can hold that one overnight. I like Hog. I think that one's got a really nice move higher. I love the support at that 200-day moving average. And I also like T-L-R-Y on the long side. On the short side, gosh, I don't think I gave you the short, did I? Well, what the heck? i got to spend a little bit of time on that. Roku. You can see this downward sloping trend line here. Stock pokes up before earnings. Hey, everybody loves the earnings on Roku. Mm, no, throughout the course of the day, you get this gigantic bearish engulfing pattern. Stock tests that 100-day moving average once, sells off. Oh, looky here. We're going to break that 200-day moving average. And that's also a horizontal support level. I think Roku is a really nice short if we close on the low of the day today for the S&P 500 and Roku closes below that 200-day moving average. I think you can short Roku and I think you can keep that short on overnight. I've changed the format of my daily videos. Right now I'm waiting for the market to show me what it's doing through the course of the day. I'm going back and I'm showing you the patterns that we traded and how we did on those. I hope that you like this research and analysis. I hope that it helps your trading. And then most importantly, I'm trying to set you up with good trades that should pan out for the rest of this day. Trades that you might be able to hold overnight if you're day trading and trades that swing traders can watch this video after hours and look at the next day. Please give it a thumbs up if you like this format. 
Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Turn on your notifications and you'll never miss one of these videos. I promise you they'll all have lots of educational content and actionable trades. Good luck trading. Be careful with your longs in here. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.